Avril Lavigne is a pop punk icon who burst onto the scene in the early 2000s. She has not only captivated our hearts with her music, but many have wondered about her changing appearance. In this video, we'll take a closer look at Avril Lavigne's journey and explore if there are signs of plastic surgery. As we usually do, we'll give a cost breakdown of these potential procedures towards the end of the video. In 2002, at the age of 18, Avril has some infrabrow fullness and this is a very youthful sign. She has broad nasal tip cartilages and this is in contrast to a bulbous tip. I don't think that she has the classic bulbous tip. She just has some width to her tip cartilages. A bulbous tip is usually because of the roundedness of the tip cartilages or the lower lateral cartilages. In her case, there's just some width to them and some prominence of the shape of them rather than how round they are. Avril also has moderate filtral length and she has a highly pronounced Cupid's bow. And this, I think, is a key distinguishing feature to her look. In 2003, at the age of 19, what I'm seeing here is that Avril has moderate lateral cheek volume, and she has a strong mandibular structure, which is the case with many of the celebrities that we cover. In 2004, at the age of 20, you can see here Avril's nasal projection is balanced nicely with her chin position. If her chin was more recessed, then the nasal projection would appear to be perhaps too much. But in this case, because of the position of her chin, everything looks like it's balanced nicely with the lip position, chin position, and the projection of her nose. In 2005, at the age of 21, Avril has full tooth show on smile. So when she smiles, you can really see almost all of her upper teeth, which is a very nice way to smile. For some people, when they smile, they have almost no tooth show and that's actually one of the reasons that they come to me seeking a lip lift at times. In 2006 at the age of 22 I see no change. In 2007 at the age of 23 I wanted to point out here how youthful Avril's eyebrows appear. The medial portion and the tail portion of the eyebrows are on the same horizontal plane. As we age the tail starts to drop below the level of the head of the brow or the medial portion of the brow. But in her case, you can see that it's straight across with a peak that occurs somewhere between the lateral limbus of the eye and the lateral canthus of the eye. In 2008, at the age of 24, I see no change. And that's the same through 2011. In 2012, at the age of 28, let's look at Avril's nasal rotation. The ideal female nasal labial angle is 95 to 105 degrees. And it looks to me like Avril's nasal rotation falls within that range. Avril also has a pristine jawline, and that's partly because of where her hyoid bone is, which is superior and posterior. It's also because of the strength of her mandible and her chin, and because of the small amount of submental adiposity that she has, or the fat content of this region right here. There's really not much of it, and because of that, the jawline really pops. In 2013, at the age of 29, now that she's getting close to 30, the tail of the brow is starting to descend, and that's something that we often see as people enter their 30s. They're basically starts to be more laxity in the tissues of the lateral face. And as that occurs, the tail of the brow starts to descend down. And that is happening lateral to the temporal crest. In 2014, at the age of 30, there is now diminished supratarsal show. And this could be due to dermatochalasis or excess upper eyelid skin and or brow descent. It also looks to me like around this time, Avril may have had some veneers placed. The teeth to me look a lot wider and it looks to me like they're more perfectly placed. In 2015, at the age of 31, this is where Avril was diagnosed with Lyme disease and she spoke publicly about this diagnosis. Lyme disease is the most common vector-borne disease in the United States. Lyme disease is caused by the bacterium Borrelia burgdorferi. It is transmitted to humans through the bite of infected black leg ticks. Typical symptoms can include fever, headaches, fatigue, and 
a characteristic skin rash called erythema migrans. If left untreated, infection can spread to joints, the heart, and the nervous system. In many cases, Lyme disease, if properly diagnosed, can be treated successfully with a few weeks of antibiotics. Keep in mind, when it comes to facial manifestations of Lyme disease, one of them is actually facial paralysis that can occur on one side or sometimes on both sides of the face, where you lose strength in the muscles of the face. Also, some people see rashes that can occur on the face because of Lyme disease. I don't believe either of these were seen in her case. In 2016, at the age of 32, what I see here is a potential brow lift because now there's a new position to the tail of her brow. It looks to me like it's been lifted and it's now more in line with the head of the brow, whereas previously, as we saw, it was starting to dip lower. To address the supertarsal region, it's usually best to position the brow into its natural state first before going ahead and removing too much upper eyelid skin. In 2018, at the age of 34, I see no change. And in 2019, I also see no change. In 2020, at the age of 36, I see the potential introduction of cheek filler. There is now more fullness medially in the cheek and there is a blurred transition between the lower eyelid and the cheek. Classically, there's at least some sort of division between those two zones to separate out the eye boundary from the cheek boundary. But in Avril's case, it looks like there is now no clear boundary between the two. And this is often the case when cheek fillers are introduced and they can sometimes be coupled with tear trough fillers that further blur that boundary. But I think that her filler, if she had any, was in fact tastefully done. It doesn't look too overdone to my eye. In 2021, at the age of 37, I'm again noticing that Avril has a mid face that's been more filled in. And I feel like she may have had lip filler around this time as well, especially to the upper lip. In 2022, at the age of 38, I see no change. In 2023, at the age of 38, I feel like this is where Avril may have started to get some Botox to the usual areas, including the forehead, the glabella, and the crow's feet. Her static glabellar lines have surely improved. Remember that Botox and other neurotoxins are primarily meant for dynamic wrinkles, wrinkles that occur as we start to animate and move our face, but sometimes they can help with static wrinkles or wrinkles that appear at rest. Avril also has reduced jaw line definition from what I can tell. And her skin looks flawless. And this is in part due to proper sun protection, making sure that you're applying sunscreen regularly, and of course, keeping up with basic skincare regimens. And we have a series of products at feelconfident.com that can help you with maintaining that skin glow. Avril Lavigne is still in her 30s. As people enter their 40s, things that can happen as far as aging of the face include reduced strength of the ligament of the face and that usually leads to the cheek complex starting to come down and in and that's when people see stronger nasolabial folds marionette lines some signs of jowling can also be evident and these are some of the changes that take place as we enter our 40s and that's something that both avril and myself have to look forward to and the total cost of these potential procedures is seventy thousand dollars what's your take on avril levine's facial evolution over the years. Do you think that it's the result of natural aging or of potential plastic surgery? Please share your thoughts in the comments below.